Hi there, my name's Andy Sykes, otherwise known as Hexjibber. I'm a award-winning animator and I also teach flash animation in universities and colleges here in the UK. This is my website, hexjibber.com, and uh, here's the lesson. Hi and welcome to my lesson on using easing, position and scale, colour effects and rotation using the new motion tweens in Flash CS4 and CS5. You can see I've got a graphic symbol moving from left to right hand side of the screen in an arc shape here. If you checked out my previous lesson I'll show you how to do that. So if we click on the first keyframe of our animation here, move over to the properties dialog, you can see that we've got ease options just like we would for classic tweens. So if I bump that all the way up to 100, zoom back out again, you'll see that our animation slows down as it moves from point A to point B. Equally, if I change that to minus 100, it'll speed up just as it would with a classic tween. You can see it's speeding up as it goes along there. If we click on that again, there's options to rotate it as it moves from point A to point B. So I'm going to change that to 3 leave it on counter uh, on that's clockwise so if we play that through our animation will spin three times as it moves from point a to point b you can click on orient path which will uh, remove the rotation we've already set so if we click on that uh, it will create a series of these properties keyframes so that our symbol moves in tandem and along the bearing of the line that we've set, so if I press enter, it will rotate along the line. Okay, good stuff. So click on our first keyframe again. I'm going to turn orient path off. Next up, if we click on our symbol, we get some different options. There's position and scale and color effect. Let's take a look at the color effect first. If I click on tint, I get a uh, all these options for changing the colour of my symbol. You can see that I've changed it to red now. And because I've changed it to red in our first keyframe, it's going to be red all the way through. That's a way in which these new motion tweens work, which is different from the classic tweens. Because we haven't set two keyframes, uh, the second keyframe is a property keyframe, which is generated by flash. So it's going to be red all the way through. So if we want to change it at the end, we have to change that back to black. So there we go. So now we can see it's changing from red to black. That's called color cycling, and it's very cool. You can see as well as tint, we've got alpha, which is uh, that controls the transparency of our object. So if we go to our second keyframe, click on that and uh, click on the symbol. You can see that if we slide alpha down to zero, our symbol appears to disappear. So if we play that through, you can see that the symbol fades out. That's really good for doing uh, fade to blacks, fade to whites, if you're doing an animation. So let's undo that so that our face comes back. There we go and click on our symbol and we can have a look at brightness and if we shove that up to the top you can see we get pretty much the same effect because uh, it's turned the brightness up so much that our face has uh, disappeared into white so if we play that through that looks pretty much like a fade too click on our symbol again we can uh, go to advanced that just gives you a kind of smorgasbord of the uh, tint and brightness and colour effects that I've just shown you. It gives you real precise control over those. So you can slide them around to get different colour effects. If we click on our symbol again, um, we've got options for looping, which is just the same as classic tweens. So if you look at my lesson on looping, it will tell you how to do that. And you've got options for playing your symbol once, playing a single frame of your symbol, or looping your symbol. So that's good for walk cycles, etc. 
and you can choose which frame you start on whether you want the first frame or five frames into your uh, loop that's up to you but do check out my lesson on loops for more about loops you can also edit the position and scale using the free transform tool so you can see in our first keyframe our face is quite big so let's move to our second keyframe and shrink our face down so if we play it through our face goes from big to small if we change the size in our first keyframe then that will set the standard for the rest you can add extra position keyframes if you want so halfway through if you wanted to shrink the face really small then if we play that it will go from big to really small to medium sized and in my next lesson I'm going to show you the motion editor which gives you even more control over your eases and helps you do some really really simple but very powerful animation so I'll see you in the next lesson Hey, if you've enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can also buy my book, The Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book. You can buy it in the UK, US, Germany, France, Japan, from Amazon and other good stores.